Welcome back to the Kutubot channel, everyone. My name is Josh, and right now we're just about to see a weekly candle close and a monthly candle close as well for both Bitcoin and Ethereum. So in just a moment, I'll be talking about exactly what this means for both Bitcoin and Ethereum on these larger timeframes, and I'll also be talking about new indicators and signals. So definitely make sure you're sticking around to the end of this video so that you don't miss out on any of this important information. First of all, starting off on the one month Bitcoin chart. So each one of these candles is an entire month. And very soon, within a couple hours from the time of recording this video, but by the time you're watching this video, we might have already seen a monthly candle close. And so the month of July will be the first green month since March this year. So Q2 was an entire red quarter. But obviously throughout July, we've seen more similar price action to what we saw in the first quarter of this year, specifically around February and March. And by the way, this moving average is the 12 month simple moving average. And basically when the Bitcoin price is below this moving average, that usually means we're in some sort of bear market. But when the Bitcoin price starts breaking back above this 12 month simple moving average, that usually means we're about to flip much more bullish again on the larger timeframes for these much larger moves to the upside. But with that being said, obviously between the bear market bottoms and the break above this moving average, we can still experience some bullish price action. It's just the majority of the bullish price action throughout Bitcoin's previous price history has occurred when the Bitcoin price is above this moving average. Now in the coming months, this moving average is likely to continue lower from the point that it's at right now, which means let's just say in a few months from now, the price that Bitcoin needs to break above in order to flip much more bullish again on the larger scale would be at a lower price if this moving average is lower. So obviously this type of thing isn't for those of you who want to try and catch the Bitcoin bottom or average into the market towards the Bitcoin bottom because obviously the bottom occurs well below this moving average but for those of you who might be swing traders this type of indicator can be a useful momentum indicator because an example of a swing trade using this indicator right here could be something as simple as buying Bitcoin when we break above it and and selling Bitcoin when we break below it. But obviously that's not personal financial advice. That's just an example of how to potentially use this indicator within a strategy. And what is really interesting is if we bring out the 24 month simple moving average, which is this red line right here, historically speaking, according to pretty much the last decade of Bitcoin's history, we can see that when the green line, the 12 month simple moving average crosses underneath the red line, the 24 month moving average, at both of these previous significant Bitcoin bear markets throughout 2014 entering into 2015 and the 2018 bear markets, those crossovers between the 12 month and the 24 month simple moving averages happened just a couple months after we saw the bear market bottom. So these crosses happened when we were still sitting in that bear market bottom territory, but once again, the bear market actually bottomed out around two to three months before we saw this cross. And if you're looking at these two moving averages right now, they haven't actually crossed over just yet. But remember when they do eventually cross, historically speaking, that means that we've already hit the bottom a couple months ago when they eventually cross. So over the coming months, I'll keep you updated on what these moving averages are doing. But for now, looking at the weekly Bitcoin chart, what we can see right here is the 200 week moving average, which is the red line that Bitcoin is currently beginning to break back above. And in fact, this 200 week simple moving average is currently coming into play just underneath 23,000, more specifically at around 22.9K. And by the way, these other moving averages on this weekly Bitcoin chart. First of all, the green line is the 1000 day simple moving average and the blue line is the 300 week simple moving average. And if you take a look at the 2018 bear market bottom and also the bottom of the March 2020 crash, both of those previous significant Bitcoin bottoms occurred around the 200 week and even the 300 week moving average in the case of the March 2020 crash. And if you're looking at how low the Bitcoin price has gone so far, we got pretty close to that 300 week moving average and well below that 200 week moving average, which is somewhat similar to these previous macro lows around these moving averages. Not to mention around one month ago, the weekly Bitcoin RSI was in oversold territories for the first time since the bottom of the 2018 bear market. And once again, that happened around a month ago. So technically speaking on the larger timeframes here, when you're looking at Bitcoin's previous history, we could potentially be around that bottom range that we normally see around these moving averages. Once again, according to Bitcoin's previous price 
history. But it is important to mention two things. First of all, this is talking about the larger timeframes here, not the immediate short term. So even though Bitcoin might be looking oversold on the weekly timeframe on these larger movements, if you're zooming into something like the four hour chart or the 12 hour chart, we could still see some short term downside price action, which is practically invisible on this time frame because once again this is the weekly chart and the other important thing to mention is the fact that we also need to factor in fundamental factors and what's happening outside of the charts such as what the Federal Reserve is doing and also what CPI inflation is doing because if CPI inflation within the next one to two months starts slowing down which means it could still be at around eight or nine percent but it's just no longer going further to the upside then that would actually be the most bullish scenario possible because if CPI inflation is coming to some sort of peak sometime soon, then based on that, the futures market is currently pricing in for the Fed to no longer raise interest rates beyond this year and potentially early next year begin cutting interest rates. Now, if we do see that sort of thing happening in CPI, meaning that if CPI inflation starts slowing down and especially if the Fed continues to slow down their rate hikes towards the end of this year, then in that scenario, it is actually very likely that we've potentially reached some sort of bottom here. But remember that does heavily rely on if CPI inflation starts slowing down and potentially starts declining in the coming months. Because in the potential scenario where let's just say if CPI inflation keeps getting worse and worse in the coming months. So for example, if CPI inflation in the US starts crossing above 10% in the coming months, then that would likely push the Fed pivot further away from where we are right now. And in that case, that would actually open up more room to the downside for pretty much all markets talking about crypto, stocks, real estate, on larger timeframes. Because for those of you who are still not aware of how important the Fed pivot is, which basically means the Fed goes from hiking rates to cutting rates or vice versa, it is extremely important for markets. For example, we had a bullish Fed pivot right here, marking the bottom of the 2018 bear market for crypto and stocks. And then we did actually see a bullish Fed pivot right at the bottom of the March 2020 crash, but that Fed pivot didn't go from rate hikes to rate cuts. It went from plateaued rates to a massive rate cut in around March 2020. So once again, a bullish Fed pivot marked the 2018 bottom, a bullish Fed pivot marked the March 2020 bottom. And in early this year, the Federal Reserve had a bearish Fed pivot where they went from plateaued interest rates to hiking interest rates. And they also went from quantitative easing to quantitative tightening, which basically meant they went from printing a lot of money to actually taking away a lot of money and essentially burning that money. But the future market started to price in that bearish Fed pivot early this year during Q4 last year. So just to recap, we had a bullish Fed pivot here, a bullish Fed pivot here, a bearish Fed pivot here. And if CPI inflation has reached some sort of peak or is very soon about to reach some sort of peak, then we're potentially due to see a bullish Fed pivot towards the end of this year entering into early next year. But the futures market is already beginning to price that in, which is essentially the opposite to what we saw in around November, December last year. But to remember, if inflation doesn't start coming back down, then this pricing in was a false pricing in. And in that case, once again, everyone pricing in the best to happen would have to essentially reverse again. So really, one of the biggest bets that you're making at the moment with investing, not just in crypto, but in stocks as well, is whether or not CPI inflation starts coming back down or continues going higher. And as always, I'll be sure to keep you updated in what CPI inflation is doing, because in just another one and a half weeks from now, we do have some some more CPI inflation data getting released, which will show us the inflation for the month of July. But anyway, getting back on track, while we're here on the weekly Bitcoin chart, taking a look at the weekly Bitcoin MACD and what we're seeing at the moment, and in fact, what we've been seeing over the past one to one and a half years is a giant divergence between the histogram within the MACD indicator and the Bitcoin price. Now, this isn't to be confused with what we're seeing on the 12 hour chart and what I covered in yesterday's video, which I'll talk more about in just a moment. So don't confuse Use this with the weekly time frame. They are two completely different time frames. But technically speaking, this weekly Bitcoin MACD, this divergence shows a change in the tide on the weekly time frame, basically beginning to hint at a larger reversal at play, which could potentially play out over many months. 
But once again, this is just one technical indicator and we also need to see some good inflation data for this to continue to be true as well. And once again, it is important to mention that this is on the weekly timeframe talking about the larger moves in the market, not the shorter term movements like the 12 hour or the four hour charts. And the reason why I want to make that clear is because just yesterday I was talking about how we're more likely to see a bit of a short term pullback, but that was in reference to a move that is visible on the 12 hour or especially the four hour chart chart, not on this weekly chart. Because obviously the moves that we're talking about here on this weekly chart are much larger in both the price and the amount of time that it takes to play out. So for example, back here in early September 2021, I said on the channel, you can go back there and take a look if you want. I said on the channel that we're very much due to see a short term pullback. I stopped dollar cost averaging into Bitcoin in early September, but I was still more bullish on the overall trend at that stage right there. And I ended up getting quite a few comments on those videos saying that I'm only saying we're either going to go up or down, but that certainly isn't the case. Because once again, what I said back there is we're due to go down in the shorter term, but overall, the larger trend is still bullish. Whereas right here, what I'm saying is the larger trend is starting to shift slightly more in the bullish direction. According to these momentum indicators and also these historic moving averages, we're historically around that area on the chart where a bottom should take place. But if you zoom into the slightly shorter term timeframes, like this 12 hour chart, as I was talking about yesterday, right around here, we were already beginning to see some short-term bearish signals such as this decline over and over again within the 12-hour Bitcoin MACD and also the fact that the price action was running into this line of resistance. And so due to that, I was mentioning in yesterday's video that we're very much due to see a short-term pullback in the price of Bitcoin that could potentially last for between around half a week up to one week according to these previous short-term pullbacks. And so due to that, I mentioned in yesterday's video right around here that I placed some short positions on Bitcoin and Ethereum. But anyway, nothing much has changed on this chart since yesterday. So if you want to know more information about all of that, check out my last video on the channel. And by the way, this level of support is currently coming into play at around $22,000 per Bitcoin. And this resistance is coming into play at around 24.7K. And while we're on the 12 hour Bitcoin chart, obviously we still have this active bearish divergence in play while we're seeing higher highs in the price action and lower highs in the RSI. So this is just another Another signal on the 12 hour time frame showing us that we do have a loss of short term bullish momentum here and we could be due for a bit more of a cool off. And at the same time as that, what I also talked about in yesterday's video, which I haven't changed, was the fact that the four hour Bitcoin RSI was recently brushing against overbought territories and looking at the last few times that's happened, we were due to see a bit more of a short term pullback. And on top of this four hour Bitcoin RSI beginning to reverse, we were also seeing a bearish cross in the four hour Bitcoin MACD. So all of these signals just in the short term timeframes were simply more bearish than bullish. And due to that, since I sent out that tweet yesterday right around here saying that I've changed my short term strategy to allocate for a bit more bearish price action in the short term, we've obviously played out a bit of short term bearish price action. And right now at the time of recording this video, we're testing this moving average, which is the five day moving average. And that is coming into play at around 23.3K. Now, if we see a confirmed break below that level with something like a four hour candle close, then in that case, we could potentially see just a few more days worth of bearish price action according to Bitcoin's recent history over the past one month or so. But remember, this is all talking about the shorter term movements here just on the four hour and the 12 hour chart, for example, not talking about the movements on the weekly Bitcoin chart. But anyway, heading into the Ethereum part of this video, and this right here is the weekly Ethereum chart, and we're actually seeing somewhat similar signals as what I talked about on the weekly Bitcoin chart. Once again, we have a bullish divergence in the history histogram within the MACD indicator between the histogram and the price action, of course. And what is interesting is the last time we saw this happen in the weekly Ethereum MACD was all the way back here in the 2018 bear market. And that was also happening as the weekly Ethereum RSI was entering into oversold territories, which we did end up seeing around a month ago. And by the way, this moving average right here is the 100 week simple moving average. And historically speaking, Ethereum has confirmed a bull market when we've seen a confirmed break above this moving average. But while we're below this moving average, according to what we saw in 2018, 2019, even entering into early 2020, even though we did see a decent amount of bullish price action within that range, generally speaking, we were within that bear market bottom territory. We did not see the extreme bullish price action of the bull market until after we broke above this 100 week moving average. And by the way, this moving average is currently coming into play at around 
100. And now zooming into the shorter term, taking a look at the 12 hour Ethereum chart, we still have this active bearish divergence in play, which once again, as I've been talking about over the past three to four days now, this simply means that we're seeing reduced bullish momentum for Ethereum right here in the shorter term at least. And just keep in mind, the last traditional bearish divergence that we saw here on the 12 hour Ethereum chart, where we saw higher highs in the price action and lower highs in the RSI was all the way back here towards the end of March entering into early April. And obviously we could see what came next. Now, I am not saying that we're going to see all of this again. I'm just saying that we could be due for a bit of a short term pullback here for Ethereum, technically speaking. And if you zoom in further into the four hour Ethereum chart, we can still see some of those short term bearish signals in play, which I talked about in yesterday's video once again. And the main ones that I'm talking about here is of course a pullback in the four hour Ethereum RSI, which is technically a downtrend now forming lower highs and lower lows just on the four hour chart. And obviously we already saw a bearish cross in the four hour Ethereum MACD yesterday. And if you simply take a look at the last couple of times that this has happened for Ethereum in the short term over the past one month or so, this has either meant that we're due to see some choppy sideways price action or more commonly over the past one month, a bit of a short term pullback. Now, obviously nothing is 100% guaranteed, but because we do have some increased risk of potential short term downside price action, I made that small change to my short term strategy yesterday, which I talked more about in yesterday's video once again. And if you want to know how to maximize your profits in crypto, whether or not the price is going up sideways or down, check out these videos popping up right here on your screen. The video in the top left shows you how to make money in crypto if the price is going either up or down. And the video in the bottom left shows you how to make money in crypto if the price is chopping around sideways. But anyway, that's everything that I have to say for today. I really hope you enjoyed and I'll see you all in the next video.